Stranger Things season three streaming now on Netflix. Um, if you, you know, 4th of July, pretty much every teenager I know did not go out of the house because they binged the entire season of season three. I've got Natalia plays Nancy Wheeler. Maya Hawk plays Robin. Hey, ladies, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Happy to be here. Congratulations. It's got to feel so good to be on such a popular hit show. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it feels, I mean, it feels really lucky and for, fortunate. And I don't know. Yeah. Definitely. And, and how much empathy do you have or sympathy for um, us old folks that grew up in the 80s as teenagers? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Your malls are pretty sick. I might say I have jealousy. Yeah, I know. It's a cool fashion, too. Yeah. We, we had some badass food courts, for sure. But the, <laughs> the fashion, I don't know. My, my, I, I went through Aquanet. You probably didn't even know what that is. But the hairstyles were crazy. Oh, the perms are oh, yes. high end. Yes, the perms. I mean, the show's three years into the show now, and those cute little kids aren't so little anymore, are they? No. No, they've, they've really shot up. I mean, every year, it's just they grow more and more. Finn is taller than, I mean, me, than a lot, a lot of us now. Um, but yeah, they're, they're growing into little teens themselves. Are you guys um, friends off-season? Yeah, I mean, well, we just, I mean, Maya and I just met this season, yeah. um, but I mean, yeah, everybody, the way that this show, we, we film for so long and we get s- so close that it, yeah, it has really just become like a family. Um, yeah, it seems like, like everyone is so adjusted. It's like you see each other and it's all natural and everyone falls back into their rhythms and yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And Maya, you're the latest addition to the cast. Did you even know what yellow pages were before you joined the show? <laughs> I did know what the yellow pages were. I <laughs> think I used to stand on them to reach the dishes on the top shelf. Really? <laughs> Isn't that all anyone has ever used them for? I don't right. know. I actually oh. used them to get in the business back in the day when I was living in Chicago. I'm like, how do I get into commercial agencies and just open up the yellow pages, start calling? Oh my That's gosh. amazing. I know. That was my little ticket so, in. So much reading. And um, <laughs> so you're right. So much re- and so much rejection, I should say. Uh, Maya, in one scene, you have to spit in some guy's face. Yeah. Is that, is that real or CGI? Or so, what you know, that? I offered to have it not be real that was my instinct but the guy whose face I was meant to spit in really felt that the we would be benefited by that moment being truly authentic and really wanted me to really spit in his face and so I put aside that being relatively slightly creepy and just went for it Um, you know I've seen a lot of actors through the years that were like no really hit me or really do this or really push me and it's like maybe it maybe it works maybe it puts you better in character Maybe. I, I don't want anyone to really hit me, but I'm no. happy to really hit other people if they want me to. <laughs> How many takes of the spitting had to happen? Like 15. It was oh a very gosh. complicated. We shot that scene where we were tied up over a period of like three days, I think. And Joe and I were just really tied up. Like you read it in this in the script and you're like, oh, that sounds cool. And then right. you don't realize that you're actually going to have to have your wrists bound and like your back against a wooden chair for a period of days. Like oh, not geez. being able to, you, there's like a fleet of five people who have to get you ready if you need to go to the bathroom. So <laughs> oh my gosh. It, was, it, was a, it was a process. Nice. You know, these kids keep getting into trouble. I mean, there's a lot of bad parenting going on in Hawkins, Indiana. <laughs> It's yeah. uh, it's just not helicopter parenting. It's a, <laughs> it's back in eighty style parenting. People seem to be obsessed with Joe Carey's hair. So he plays Steve on the show. Does he get special hair treatment or what's the deal? I think it's all natural. It just baby. grows like that yeah. out of his head. It's amazing. I know. God. It's nothing, what does he nothing eat? can be done. Yeah. It's just genetics. I think it's just genetics. genetics. You and know, charisma. watching game, watching um, you know, Game of Thrones, people had such an issue with the Starbucks being on set and things that didn't match the times. Do you guys find that um, you're particularly careful, like not having an iPad there or things like that? I mean, I feel like when you're starting to do a scene, in order to be in the world of the scene, you look around to see, to make sure that everything matches and makes sense and hopefully take your iPad and your coffee cup off the table. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think people... People on our sets are pretty wary of things in the shot, and the art department does such a good job of making it feel real. I mean, yeah, I, I think aside from just all the you know the cameras and everything mm-hmm. that's there, I'd be the loser with really my cell phone sticking out mm-hmm. somewhere. There are some. I mean, I some people do. I've, I've definitely you know you just slide it in like a couch cushion or something. Um, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, no, I, I would agree that really ideally it's just all 
it's all um, just in in the world. As yeah. much there's as a possible. lot. There's a lot of emotional scenes in season three. Did any of them make you guys cry when you went back and watched it? The, the I mean, the last episode. I think it was really mm-hmm. sad. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of people on social media were just like so devastated. Like, yeah. How do you guys? What, what do you do with people when they? give you that kind of emotion back is it like oh yay we got him or like oh my god i know i feel bad <laughs> no I, I think it's, it's i mean that i mean that's what you want as an actor and so not to make people cry but just to make that connection to like really you know to make them feel something i think that's always beautiful yeah um, yeah i feel like laughter or tears or it's like it's the sound of listening like mm-hmm. when people are able to have an emotional response to a imaginary story it's an incredibly powerful cathartic tool that right. we all use and love and for I think the thing that makes Stranger Things really special is that it's also really funny and really action-packed and really joyful and so if you, the fact that all those things get to come together within it makes it something that I'm really proud to be a part of you should be and I think it's pretty obvious we're heading in you know to season four do you guys know if the Duffer Brothers plan to wrap the whole thing up at all we know nothing yeah they don't tell us anything they don't. No. Is it, or anything they, they tell us, we can't tell you. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, what was the toughest scene that each of you guys had to film for season three? I mean, there was, just, there was a lot of action stuff this season that gets, I mean, it's so fun. Um, and the CGI stuff, like a lot, a lot of the fun stuff, but, but behind the scenes, it's very technical and takes a very long time and a lot of shots and a lot of setups to shoot. And I think, you know, that makes for really really long days but um yeah you know I think some of the more difficult ones are the ones that end up being the most fun and the fun the most fun to watch back as well yeah I think it depends on whether or not you're talking about difficulty in terms of the acting or like the physical act of having to do the scene both or either like I think for me the hardest one physically was there's the scene where we're running from the Russians we can say Russians now yes um there was a scene where we're running from the Russians um and uh, through like that hub when we, we were getting chased and we had to do that chase like, I don't know, a thousand times and I don't run on the treadmill enough to really <laughs> be able to do that with a tremendous amount of charisma. Right. And then, but then the hardest scene acting wise was definitely like that scene in the, in the bathroom at the end with Joe. Um, hmm. That was really, that was really hard and, but hard in the best, like you want it to be hard, you know, you want right. it to be challenging and are the producers really cool with letting you guys um give ideas or notes or say like you know my character it feels weird to say that do you feel like an open relationship like that yeah I think the duffers are really um you know especially like three three seasons into the show we've all helped to kind of grow these characters and create them and I think the duffers are really open to um you know suggestions and ideas um and, and and letting us shape these characters and i think a lot of the characters have grown um in ways that the duffers didn't expect because of the actors and the way that they pushed them and molded them so yeah i, I think for the most part and i mean we can't quite change major plot points of theirs i don't think not yet but they, they listen so we see nancy chasing her dreams and shooting some guns for people that haven't seen the whole season yet, where is she headed I mean, this season, I, I think she's um, she's just coming into herself more. I think she's, you know, she's growing up, and she's she's grown up a lot since we met her in season one, and um, you know, she's she's faced with these challenges again that really kind of solidify her her voice and her sense of intuition. Um, and beyond that, be, I, I I don't know. We don't really know what's going to happen next, but I I do feel like she's going to keep going on this path of um you know figuring things out figuring herself out but you know finding truth she has this sort of journalistic instinct in her to to figure out what's going on um so yeah i'd I'd, I'd like to see her keep going in that direction me too it's very empowering yeah what what do people come up to you guys and say what is the common thing that you hear um nothing yet um, <laughs> yeah. Get ready. Not yet. <laughs> Get ready. I mean, I, I've been. I went from when it came out to going to the countryside and like planting blueberry bushes. So, so you haven't I'm, been I'm out a there yet. Out of the loop. <laughs> um, it's a lot of love. Usually, I mean, you know, it's, it's hmm. people saying, you know, that they, they like the show. That you know, um, yeah, really, that's that's most of it. It's just people. 
And Maya, your your dad Ethan Hawke said that you're the real thing, which I love. Like um, play on words and just awesome. Is it so great to feel that support from your dad? I mean, parents? it's certainly so much better than feeling no support. Um, right. Which happens. <laughs> I mean, yeah, which happens. I, you know, my um, my parents are wonderful and really supportive and have. Uh, I don't know, given me a lot, and uh, I feel really grateful to have their support. And they both loved the show and love it before I was on it. So it's fun. I love it. I love that you can, like, take it and be like, thank you. Whereas if my parents said it to me or they have said it to me, I'm like, you're just saying that because you're my mom and dad. You hated it. They're like, no, we did. We like it. <laughs> well, but having I, your... I, I know my parents don't uh, BS me. They're pretty, uh, mm. they're pretty rigorous in terms of their commentary. When they like something or don't. Can I ask, because I, I, we have three boys and um, between me and Donnie, and what does it feel like to be in a family where you have parents as celebrities? Like, I don't know what that's like because my mom was a janitor and a hairdresser. And my dad was a steel mill worker. But I can't imagine, do you feel pressure to to make it or do you feel um because I'm trying to figure it out for my own son is there an identity issue what is it like when you're growing up I think if you're lucky it's like you don't have parents who are celebrities like I Mm. was never aware of my parents being anything other than my parents they were loving and present Mm. and we played games and took train rides and I, I I didn't feel like I was in a public family um I felt I mean except for a few kind of horrifying high school moments along the way but um for the most part I just love my family and my parents and it doesn't matter what they do and that's kind of how they raised us and I went into acting not there was no pressure it was that I love it more than anything else and um so I don't know oh, I love that it sounds like you had a great childhood that's why you're normal <laughs> yeah well you know it's for, it's for radio so. <laughs> yeah right yeah. And these these schedules can be grueling like people don't get what it's like to shoot these kind of shows like right. you really it's hard to have a life outside of it when you're filming a season mm. yes lots this season was lots of nice shoots I mean I know you guys were at the, the mall for so, for so long so long um yeah and it takes about seven months for us to shoot so that's like half of our half of our year spent in this in this world um which which is great. I, I think you know it's it's been really fun so far. It's it's been um, kind of a warm environment to, to create in. What do you guys have? What are your goals, like career goals? Is it just where where do you see yourself or manifesting next in your lives? I don't know. I think that's a hard to say because. Uh, the world of acting and the arts is so malleable and like you never know what it is that you really want to do until you read it and you're like oh that's it that's the thing I want to do next Mm. Um, but all I I know is that I want to you know the thing that's so amazing about the Duffer Brothers is they really love the story they're telling they really love what they do they're total geeks like passionate (laughs) passionate geeks and I just want to always work with geeks because they like the amount of with people who, which, what I mean by that is people who love what they do. Passionate. And in, in every industry, there are people who love what they do and people who do it for other reasons. And I want to work with people who love what they do. Mm-hmm. So. I love it. And do you, have you guys ever had, and I love acting, asking actresses this, but um, any kind of weird, crazy audition stories where you're just like, oh my God, I totally bombed it. Or I, you know, anything. I thought I, I bombed, bombed this one. <laughs> I honestly, I thought, I, I thought there was... I don't know. You just you never know. You really don't. And it's, um, yeah. It's sometimes. so scary, isn't it? When you go in there and you're like, oh, my God, I just, I feel like I freaking sucked. And you're driving the way home. I'm like, I'm going to work. Get take your right chicken. I can't do it. And, but you obviously got the role, so you must have killed it. I guess. I don't, I'm not really good at reading people in that way, I don't think. But, um, yeah, you just, you know, you just go in and you, and you, you give your your version and you know there's so much unpredictability and um you know in in this business so you can't so you true. can't get too attached to anything I once went to an audition having had totally the wrong lines memorized oh like I God. had an audition I had a different audition memorized from a different thing I was going out for oh, no. and so I had those scenes memorized and not the ones that I was supposed <laughs> to have for and that I think I almost threw up it was, <laughs> it was a very unpleasant experience. right it's so terrible and you guys still get nervous at all absolutely yeah. every day really yeah yeah 
Oh, that's kind of refreshing to hear, I guess, that it still happens. I think if you talk to any actor at any point in their career, they always think that they're never going to work again. Um, right. Like, I mean, no matter how successful you get, because it's basically like a freelance job. Like, you know, you never know what your next year is going to look like, your next so month. So true. And it, it induces a lot of nerves. Yeah. Um, Talk about having to have faith is what I say, you know, yeah, yeah. and trust in the universe to be like, all right, this is what I want to do. Please keep it going. Yeah. yeah. Or just yeah. the inability to do, to, to not do it. You know, yeah. I think that's yeah. the thing is you just got to be a little bit crazy. Mm-hmm. Totally. And, and Maya, I know that um, you've talked about you have dyslexia, which I can completely relate to. Is it hard in auditions to then like read? Yeah, lines. it's the hardest thing for me, I think, just like, it, not hardest, like, it's it's just the most work. Uh, you know, the way that the audition schedules, like, roll out is you usually would, like, get a script sent to you and scenes, and then, like, within five or so days, like, you know, three to five days, you'll have to go and do the audition, and it takes me, like, a week or more to read a whole script. So, I, I don't know, it, it's it's an obstacle for me, for sure. Um, it, is is doing all the reading and I would I would think so, but you are doing an amazing job, and I just oh, I'm both glad of it looks guys. that way from the outside. You guys, I'm really excited to watch you guys just this uh, be on this journey. Congratulations on this, Natalia and uh, Maya. You guys, uh, season three, Stranger Things. You guys, you can watch now on Netflix. Thanks so much, ladies. Come back anytime. Thank, Thank you. you so Thanks. much. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks, nice guys. to meet you. You too. We'll be right back. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh.